Okay, this is a garden tour part two. And I'm just gonna start on my front um, beds that are right on the street. Just right along the street here. Uh, this first small tree right here is a calistamon. And it's a burgundy colored flower. It's called Jeffers Eye. And I put that in in 2010. I'll actually I'll slap a picture on here some of when it's blooming because it's not blooming right now, but it, it blooms for a really long time. And then I've got a bunch of Gallardias, which are some of our favorites. They are practically bulletproof. Um, they are from North America and they attract, uh, definitely attract uh, bees and butterflies. They are very drought tolerant and like usually we cut them back quite a bit once they get, they start to get a little leggy after a while and we'll cut them back to almost nothing and they'll come back and they also reseed. So these are great. Uh, we've got a couple of crepe myrtles that are uh, Tuscarora crepe myrtles. That's Lagerstremia indica and it's uh, mixed with Bowerii. Uh, those are pinkish red flowers and it gets a really nice full uh, bloom cycle uh, later on in the summer. Well, they'll, it'll be coming up soon, actually. Okay, so moving along here, there's a Salvia Lucantha. It's a Mexican sage, Mexican bush sage. Uh, this little apple tree right here is an Anna's apple. And a lot of people in San Diego or, or sort of Southern California will be familiar with this, especially in the sort of mild, milder climates. It's uh, an apple that needs very little chill. Uh, this one was developed in a kibbutz called Kibbutz Ein Shemer in Israel in the 1950s. Uh, it, so obviously in uh, the Middle East, they're going to be looking for fruit that doesn't need a whole lot of chill. So that was developed there and it works really well in our climate, which we're in, uh, we're in zone 23 for the Western Garden Book and we're in zone 10B for uh, USDA. Uh, they, they say the flavor on that apple is similar to a gala. It's a mild, sweet and tart. And I'll show you the, the one that's getting most ripe here is right there. And they're, they ripen up between June and July. Although I have had apples like really weird other times of the year. so. It kind of keeps going, um, but this is the big, the big one right now. And this is a real small tree and you can keep it small. I'll probably keep this. I mean, it could get technically like 15 to 20 feet tall, but I'll probably keep it within um, picking range, you know, just from the ground. Uh, this is a sweet pea shrub. That's kind of, we thought it went away for a while, but it kind of popped back right in the middle of the salvia. Uh, you can see some lettuce blooming here that I planted actually in my in my four by four bed which is right back there oh well, you can't really see it but anyway um, the I let the lettuce go to seed and so it puts out uh, it puts out flowers and it, and it goes to seed right and it just pops up all over the place and finches like it so I just let it go it's not really that great when it comes up out here because I don't really think it gets enough water to be super good lettuce but anyway it's okay I pick it a little bit here and there and kind of eat it while I'm out in the garden. This is one of my favorite plants that we have out front called Aloysia trifilla. It's a, um, or I'm sorry, Aloysia vergata. It's an incense bush and sometimes called a sweet almond bush. It's in the verbena family and it doesn't really, um, it's a pretty, a pretty shrub, but the flower or inflorescence is not very noticeable. Um, it's right there, but the scent is totally amazing. So that one, that one wafts through the air all the time out here. I have one more uh, crepe myrtle here, same one Tuscarora. And then we'll move on to star jasmine, which is kind of like all over the place here. As soon as that one's done blooming, I'll probably um, cut it back quite a bit, but it's, uh, it's pretty for now and it smells really good. That's Trachylospermum, jasminoides. This is uh, another sage. I think this one might be called indigo spires, but anyway, it's a really hardy guy and the bees obviously love it. There's a bee right there. And then this is a autumn sage, also another one of my favorites. We have a lot of salvias, um, 
This one does get a little bit woody, but I tend to like cut it back little by little and it does pop back even like you can kind of see it's popping right back from the wood right there. So um, I usually just kind of keep it cut back a little bit so it's not completely hanging out in the street, but it's since it's blooming right now, I won't do much to it. Uh, here's another yellow Gallardia. I'm not sure about the hybrid name on these, but they're, most of them are Gallardia X Grandiflora. They're all hybrids of different colors. This is a Leonotus leonurus or lion's tail shrub. That's from South Africa. Super drought tolerant, very easy to grow and uh, beautiful. And uh, the only thing I will say is that we have watered them too much and it's not good to do that because if you water it too much, it's probably gonna get rotten. Uh, right behind all this, we just recently put in a fig that we had in a pot for a long time. My neighbor gave it to us in a pot. It's a panache, so it's, it's called a tiger fig. It's got these little little figs coming on and uh, they're, they've got stripes on them. So it's a really cool fig, really pretty and uh, kind of a nice or ornamental plant, but also gives you fruit, which is um, ideal. Kind of what I look for a lot of times in stuff that I plant. Uh, it wasn't doing real good in the pot. It, was, it does a lot better in the ground. Like I can tell immediately since we put it in the ground that it's just popping figs like crazy. Okay, and then we're gonna move over to the other side of the uh, walkway here. Some more iris. I believe these are bearded iris. Um, but I could be wrong on that. My neighbor gave those to us and we put them in oh, several years ago. We just put a couple bulbs in the ground and they've, they've kind of taken over that space. And there's a few more back over on this side. Um, yeah, some more different colored um, autumn sages here. There's a, a little pinkish sage and a purple sage mixed together. There's some native grasses coming up in there that I planted a long time ago, but I decided I didn't really want them because they just looked like kind of weedy to me. But they're probably not going to go away, so I'll just leave them alone. Um, the One of our favorite shrubs is this acacia covenii. I'll back up so you can get a better view of it. Just a beautiful Australian acacia. And um, it does bloom as pretty much every acacia I know blooms has a yellow bloom, but this one for some reason forms buds, but it never really pops, but it's okay because it's such a beautiful shrub or it's like a large shrub, small tree. Um, yeah, so very happy we planted that one even if it doesn't get the blooms on it and then this is a salvia clevelandii cleveland sage and that one's a uh, native to southern california and it does really well with very little water it's living in the shade here but it's not really ideal in the shade. It would be better to probably be a little bit more sun. But if I trim this acacia up just a little bit more, it'd probably get a little bit more sun. But anyway, you can see it's pretty happy anyway. Uh, there's a butterfly bush back here, a buddleia, kind of tucked away. Also not ideal to have in the shade, but seems to be doing all right. And then this one is a little cystus uh, rock rose. It's a little pink one. This sort of dull pink is not really my favorite color for, for a flower, but uh, I think this looks really good and cute. It's just a cute little uh, rock rose there, and I'm happy we put it in. Um, we do have another rock rose, which I'll show on a different video, that's that's a, a darker pink that we I, I really like quite a bit better as far as the color of the flower, but this is a nice little plant. All right, well, thanks for watching.